off we go. Ugh, this tunnel's messed up. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. After nearly five years since its stunning announcement trailer, we're now just one month away from the launch of Atomic Heart, the strictly single-player first-person shooter that thrusts you into an alternate history Soviet setting and tasks you with taking on an army of angry androids. The good news is that after going hands-on with the first couple of hours of a near-final build of the game, this Bolshevik Bioshock seemed as though it could be well worth the wait. Its super-powered combat, fascinating story and spectacular setting all appear to be clicking seamlessly into place to form a cohesive whole, blinking into vibrant life like one of its many deadly assembly line creations. The opening moments of Atomic Heart's reportedly 25-hour campaign takes you from the sun-kissed streets of Chalamet City floating high among the clouds, all the way down to the shadowy subterranean depths of the ruined Vavilov facility where a violent robot uprising has wiped out almost all human workers. Weapons and skills are doled out fairly slowly in this initial stretch, and with only a fireman's axe and limited shells for my shotgun, I found myself favoring stealth wherever possible. So it's just as well that the earliest upgrades you unlock are the abilities to track enemies through walls and shock the dandelion surveillance cameras in order to avoid alarm-raising detection. On the occasion that I did alert a guard to my presence, the stiff challenge presented by Atomic Heart's early enemy types came as a bit of a shock to my system. Or indeed, a system shock, if you prefer. These resilient Terminator types ignore cover in favor of making a beeline to deliver you a beatdown. And even if you manage to circle strafe and dash in order to create some distance, they're still liable to open up their animatronic maws and blast hot laser death in your direction. I must admit to perishing a few times early on as I got to grips with the rhythms of the weighty melee combat system, but that struggle grew into a sense of satisfaction as I unlocked alternate attacks and gradually became more capable of turning these robot ruskies into sparking shards of Soviet scrap. As I explored deeper into the darkened corners of Atomic Heart's first facility, I was pleasantly surprised by numerous examples of intelligent design. Rummaging through corpses and cabinets for ammo and crafting materials is a cumbersome yet necessary evil in most other first-person shooters. So being able to swiftly vacuum up a room's worth of items with a wave of your AI-enhanced glove, like you're sucking up gold coins from a level in Luigi's Mansion, is a welcome time saver. That's not to say you aren't still rewarded for taking your time to pour over every inch of your surroundings, and I enjoy the occasional optional diversions, like pausing to watch Soviet spins on Looney Tunes cartoons, or to make prank calls in a public phone booth. Is your refrigerator running? Yeah! And it's coming to get you, kid! Ah, oh, crap! Of course, if you're going to fill your game with mechanical maniacs, then you're going to need a soundtrack that's equally heavy with metal. And as a big Doom fan, I was delighted when composer Mick Gordon's signature detuned guitars and double kick drums surged through the speakers to accompany a boss fight against a hulking robot wrecking ball that pinballed around the arena like an over caffeinated chain chomp. Gordon's ability to masterfully pair head-banging riffs with headshots like some sort of first-person shooter sommelier is not to be understated, and Atomic Heart's more intense action sequences are made all the more invigorating as a result of his involvement. While I couldn't get enough of the heavy metal shredding that accompanied the shredding of heavy metal, I'm yet to be completely won over by Atomic Heart's mouthy main star. Agent P3's quips aim for action hero style swagger, but come across as something closer to the repetitive trash talking of a 14 year old Fortnite fan. F my life. And given Atomic Heart appropriates so much from the likes of Half-Life 2, Bioshock and Doom, at times I did find myself wishing it had poached one of their silent protagonists while it was at it. How do you like that, gearhead? How do you like that, gearhead? I did at least appreciate the bluntness of your AI partner, Charles. It was a pleasure serving with you, Major P3. Unfortunately, you are about to be killed. There's also a slight concern that the wide open spaces in between Atomic Heart's five main facilities may be lacking in interesting things to discover. While I definitely enjoyed testing out my electroshock and force slam abilities on groups of patrolling sentries, and then frantically scrambling to take down the repair bots before they could resurrect their tin can comrades, I couldn't help but notice that my surroundings were seemingly populated by the same handful of farmhouses and drivable vehicles in the short amount of time I spent exploring one corner of the overworld. This is in contrast to the opening of the game in Chalamet City, which looks dense with unique detail but can only be experienced in a very linear fashion. 
That said, even if the open world area does merely serve as a place to blast robotic hordes to bits in order to farm for spare parts to craft with, it seems like there will be enough creativity contained within Atomic Heart's main facilities to sustain the adventure. From underground labs with bodies of water suspended in air that you can swim through in order to quickly evade attackers, and various puzzle rooms to neatly take advantage of your growing suite of glove-based powers. What do I do now? Lug this sh to the boiler myself? My short time with Atomic Heart definitely left me with my curiosity peaked and my pulse racing, and if it can sustain its intrigue and ingenuity for the full length of its journey, it could be something very special indeed. For more previews of upcoming games, check out our hands-ons with Sons of the Forest and Fire Emblem Engage. And for everything else, stick with IGN. I knew it was going to be rough.